In this video we'll see how to use cluster sampling method with spreadsheets using a roster of students similar to what you do in your application. The first step in cluster sampling is to separate the individuals into groups called clusters. The typical example for cluster sampling is that you're trying to pull uh, individuals in a city or geographic area and you don't have a field um, but you do have things broken up into city blocks or zip codes or things like that and neighborhoods and, and what you do is you consider those neighborhoods or city blocks to be clusters and you can go on a map and number those and then you randomly pick which of those clusters you're going to go out and canvas and then go out and do your surveying or something. Um, so if we were in a classroom um, it'd be nice to then use some kind of physical locations of people in the classroom but we don't have that. Um, but I can use my uh, information about what curriculum people are studying and uh, I'm going to separate people into clusters based on the uh, course of study they're using. Okay, so you can actually have Excel help you this a little bit. Let's go ahead and uh, select these individuals and then go over to sort and filter and do a, a custom sort and tell it to sort by column B and then it sorts based on those majors. And let's go ahead and do some grouping here. We're gonna we're gonna group nursing with the emergency medical services. Um, we're going to put all the social sciences people together. Uh, engineering will be a group. Business administration will be a group. We'll do a general studies and we'll actually throw that in with non curricular or career exploration. And then science will be its own group. All right. So then we need to um, number these number these groups. like we have one, two, three, four, five, six groups here. All right. Now I want to try to get a cluster sample of say five. Um, and you're going to find out that it's difficult to always get the exact sample size you want without bending the rules on this a little. So you can bend the rules on the sampling method and get the right sample size or you can bend the rules on the sample size and get the right uh, method. And I think that it's important to have the sample size be a minimum sample size. You usually don't want less than that. If anything, you want more. Um, so I'm going to do four. And what we're going to do is randomly pick one of these clusters. So we'll use the rand between again. And we're going to pick a random number between one and six. And it's going to randomly pick one of the majors. All right, I picked number six, which is the general studies. All right, so typically when you pick one of these clusters, you include all the individuals within the cluster. So I'm going to copy and then paste those here. Those two individuals are in the cluster. Right. Now, the, it automatically generated a number, and it generated the number 1, which is purple, which is science. Now, if I include all three science students, I then have exceeded my sample size. So I have a choice. I can include all three and get a sample of size 5, or I can just pick two of them. Now, when I just pick two, I could just pick the first two, or I could randomly pick two, um, that's really up to you. So I'm going to just go ahead and pick the uh, whole group here and actually end up getting a sample of size 5. So it's okay to have a larger sample size, um, but I would not pick another group after this obviously, right? Once you've exceeded that, you don't pick any more clusters. So let's go ahead and set down. So the sample size ended up being 5. But there's a sample of size 5 and we collected it using cluster sampling. 